Now, um, it is uh, my sincere pleasure to present to you uh, our second keynote speaker of the day. Uh, Ms. Shara per Perlmutter is the Register of Copyrights and Director of the U.S. Copyright Office. Uh, Ms. Perlmutter was appointed in October 2020 and advises Congress and the executive branch agencies on copyright policy. Uh, she has an incredibly illustrious career, and even beyond her current role, what I'd like to do is just give you a little bit of background on her before we hear from her. Uh, prior to her appointment uh, as Register, uh, Ms. Perlmutter had served since 2012 as Chief Policy Officer and Director for International Affairs at the USPTO. In that position, she was Policy Advisor to the Under Secretary of Commerce for IP and oversaw the USPTO's domestic and international IP policy activities, including through the Office of Government Affairs, the Global Intellectual Property Academy, the IP Attaché Program, as well as the Office of the Chief Economist. Uh, before joining the, the USPTO, Register Perlmutter was Executive Vice President for Global Legal Policy at the International Federation of the Phon Phonographic Industry. Now, if you're not familiar with IFPI, they are an international nonprofit that represents the worldwide voice of the recording industry. So, uh, Ms. Perlmutter is no, no uh, stranger to, to many different forms of IP. Uh, prior to that role, uh, she held the position of Vice President and Associate General Counsel for Intellectual Property Policy at Time Warner. Uh, Register Perlmutter as also, uh, she was a law professor at the Catholic University of America and she taught copyright, trademark, unfair com competition law as well as IP uh, law. So uh, while a faculty, she also served as copyright consultant to the Clinton Administration's Advisory Council on the National Information Infrastructure. So. Uh, we are particularly pleased, Register, to have you here. It is such a treat for us. So what I'd like to do is have her come to the stage here, and uh, we will hear from her as our second uh, guest speaker. So thank you very much. Well, good morning, everyone. It is a true pleasure to be here with you in rainy Boston today. Uh, and my topic this morning, uh, as I was thinking about uh, this presentation, was uh, virtually inevitable, and that is copyright and artificial intelligence. Uh, now, AI is clearly the subject of the day, but not only of the day and of this conference, much of this conference, but also at least the year. Uh, and the amazing capabilities of generative AI in particular have captured the attention of policymakers as well as the general public. And apart from all of the other issues raised for society as a whole, the implications for intellectual property may be profound. The copyright field in particular is currently the focus of debate for two main reasons. First of all, members of the public are now deploying sophisticated generative AI systems to produce music and art and text, the classic subject matter of copyright. And second, creators have become very vocal in the press, on the Hill, and in the courts uh, about their concerns as to how their works are being used in the process. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right. There we go. The Copyright Office has been very active in response to these developments. In March, we announced the formal launch of a broad AI initiative along with a dedicated web page. And we issued guidance on how to register works that incorporate AI-generated content. Over the past six months, we've held numerous meetings and events to explore the copyright implications of the latest iterations of this technology which have been attended by thousands of people. And at the end of August, we published a Notice of Inquiry, or NOI in Washington speak, uh, seeking public comment on the full range of issues that have been raised. 
And already we've received well over 6,000 submissions, uh, and we still have about six more weeks to go. So this level of interest is not surprising because the issues here are not just technical copyright issues, but they're really existential. Uh, they touch on the nature and the future of human creativity and how it can coexist and interact with potentially unlimited technological capabilities. So what I will do this morning is to give you first a sense of the copyrightability issues that the Copyright Office has been grappling with in our day-to-day -day work on the registration process and the challenges that lie ahead on the copyrightability front. I'll then outline the infringement-related issues that we're exploring uh, through the NOI responses, as well as some issues that go beyond copyright relating to deep fakes, which I'm sure you've read about. Uh, and then finally, I'll talk a bit about the ultimate policy questions at stake and the office's planned next steps. So the office's initial foray into current AI technology involved the copyrightability of the output of AI systems. And this was a function of our role in registering copyright claims. While we don't investigate the facts set out in an application for registration, we do review the work to make sure that it's copyrightable. And a few years ago, we started receiving applications to register works created using generative AI. This meant we had to start making decisions early on and take some public positions before governments started doing so in other countries. So I'm going to show you four notable examples. So the first application we received was essentially a test case. It was a copyright claim in a work of visual art created entirely by AI with no human involvement. And the work is called A Recent Entrance to Paradise, and you see it on the screen. Uh, in my opinion, it's actually quite beautiful. The applicant was Dr. Stephen Thaler, a name that might sound familiar. Uh, and he identified the author of this work as the creativity machine and identified himself as the copyright claimant by virtue of owning the machine. Uh, and he described the work as autonomously created by a computer algorithm running on a machine. Now, in examining this claim, we were not working from a blank slate. As far back as the late 19th century, courts had been looking at the scope of copyright in works created using machines, starting with the camera. Uh, and looking at the reference to authors in the Constitution, as well as the language of the Copyright Act, they had concluded that human authorship was required for copyright protection. They rejected copyright claims, for example, in a selfie taken by a monkey, and in a book purported to be authored by non-human spiritual beings. And the question in each case was really whether the work, even if a machine was used as a tool, reflected a human being's creative choices. So applying these well-established principles to Dr. Thaler's claim, the Copyright Office refused registration. And Thaler sued, arguing that the text of the Copyright Act does not explicitly restrict copyright to human-authored works, and that any ambiguity should be resolved in favor of protection in order to encourage the maximum creation and dissemination of works for the public benefit. Now, I'm happy to say that three weeks ago, uh, August 18th, uh, in a case called Thaler v. Perlmutter, uh, the US District Court for the District of Columbia issued a decision agreeing with the Copyright Office. It held that human authorship is an essential part of a valid copyright claim. And of course, as you know, the courts have reached a similar result in the test case also brought by Dr. Thaler seeking patent protection for an invention uh, by an AI system. Now, both cases involve interpretation of the constitutional terms authors and inventors as found in the statutory language. And so far, the results are consistent that IP protection is limited to human originators. Now, the Thaler application involved a clear and straightforward set of facts. Other applications that we've received present more challenging scenarios. What about works that were produced through a combination of human and machine input. 
what type and amount of human contribution is enough to merit copyright protection. So more recently, we received an application for registration involving a comic book that was created using generative AI called Zarya of the Dawn. And you can see the cover and some of the images on this slide. Now, ultimately, we determined that because of the way the particular AI technology, which was mid-journey, worked, uh, that the images it generated lacked sufficient human authorship to be protected. We saw the prompts fed into the AI as similar to instructions given to an artist that could be commissioned to illustrate the comic book, where the artist would normally remain the author of the illustrations. So we canceled the original registration and issued a more limited one that covered only the human authored elements of the work. And that was the text and the selection, coordination, and arrangement of the text and images, but not the images in themselves. Now the third application involved a claim of joint authorship between a human and AI. And to create the work, the human applicant selected two images as inputs for the AI. One was a style image, and that's the image on the left, which was Van Gogh's The Starry Night. And the other was a content image to which that style would be applied. And you see the content image, which was a photograph of a sunset actually taken by the human applicant. And the AI took that input and output the image on the right, which is called Suryast. Uh, so it's a version of the human's photograph taken in the style of The Starry Night. The Copyright Office's Registration Division rejected the claim, and this was based on a conclusion that the human applicant did not contribute any copyrightable authorship in the final product, as opposed to the original photograph, which could be separately copyrightable, uh, that there was no copyrightable authorship from the human that could be distinguished from the computer's contribution, from the AI's contribution. Now, one thing that's interesting about this case is that a few other countries have also looked at the same copyright claim. And in 2020, India recognized AI as a co-author of Suryast, although that decision was later withdrawn, and I understand litigation is still ongoing. And in 2021, the Canadian IP office registered the copyright. But the significance of these apparently divergent results is not yet clear as Canada does not examine copyright claims before registering them, and the outcome in India is still open. So the most recent example of a more complex claim uh, came just a few days ago when the office's internal review board issued a decision upholding the refusal to register a work of visual art called Théâtre d'Opéra Spatiale. And you can see on the slide the initial images generated by the AI, again, mid-journey. And then on the right, the revised version that the applicant sought to register. The board concluded that the applicant could not be considered the author of the initial image because his sole contribution was inputting the text prompts that produced it. And because this AI-generated material could not be protected by copyright, was more, because the AI-generated material was more than a de minimis contribution to the overall work, the ultimate work sought to be registered, it needed to be disclaimed before the copyrightability of the applicant's additional contribution could be considered. If the applicant were willing to disclaim the AI-generated material, he could file a new application and explain how his modifications to the image rose to the level of copyrightable authorship. So I would say, here's the essential question raised in these more complex scenarios. Under what circumstances, if any, would a human using a generative AI system produce a copyrightable expressive work? When and how can a human exert enough control over the expressive elements in the work generated by AI to constitute authorship? In other words, when does the AI become a tool that reflects the author's creativity or enables the author's creativity, the human's creativity, rather than being the source itself of the expressive elements? So we've asked for input and views on all of this uh, in our NOI. 
And I should note that as difficult as it sounds, this type of line drawing is not new to copyright. Similar distinctions have to be made, for example, in determining when a human author drawing on a prior work has added enough new creative elements to constitute a separately protectable derivative work, or when an author who hires an artist to illustrate a book has given such specific directions that they can qualify as a co-author of the resulting illustrations. Now, the guidance we issued in March confirms the requirement of human authorship and explains some of these distinctions. It also instructs applicants to disclaim AI-generated content in their work if it is more than de minimis. And that's very similar to our long-standing requirement to disclaim copyrighted material owned by others that's incorporated in the new work sought to be registered. So I do want to make the point here that our goal is not to set up any barriers to registration. We want people to register. We want to make that as easy as possible. But rather, what we're trying to do through our guidance is to help them avoid future problems, such as any questioning of the validity of a registration by parties in a litigation or by the courts. We do expect to further develop and refine the guidance based on comments and questions about it that we've received, as well as our continued review of more applications as they come in. Now, on the infringement side, we're seeing more and more discussion of the legal implications of the incorporation of copyrighted works into the training of large language models. And this includes a number of